Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. Jaded Blossom has a brand new release and it's all about sports. Jaded Blossom just keeps coming out with more and more fun releases and their March 2024 release doesn't disappoint. The first item is a stencil called Go Team Stencil. This is currently not available for individual purchase. This is the freebie you'll receive if you purchase at least $50 worth of product and one item must be from the new release. This is for a limited time and while supplies last. The next item is another stencil set. This one's called Game Day Stencil. There are two layers in this stencil set. Perfect for creating some fun football theme pattern paper. The first stamp set is called Have a Ball Nomi and there are coordinating outline dies. Really fun variety of sport themed sentiments. Jaded Blossom always has a great variety of fonts. I'll flip over the stamp and die so you can get an idea of the actual size. I always enjoy the variety of different fonts that Jaded Blossom uses for their stamp sets. There is another sentiment set. This one's called Root for the Gnome Team. And there are also coordinating outline dies. Another fun variety of sport theme sentiments. And I love having the dies to go around the sentiments. This set has sentiments for hockey, baseball, football, pickleball, there's cheer, bowling, and I think a few others on that set. There are two new gnome die sets. Both are sport themed. The first one is called sport add-on set number one. And there are a ton of dies in both of the new sport add-on sets. Set number one has football, baseball, there's tennis, hockey, bowling, pickleball, there's also the megaphone and the fan flag. Sport add-on set number two has golf, soccer, there's basketball, volleyball, it has the trophy, and it also has the partial body for the gnome that includes the shirt, shorts, and legs and feet. So now you can have the gnome standing up, and with the boy gnome, we've never been able to add shorts or pants on them, so this is a really fun new option. I do have a few cards to share using some of the new products. For pattern paper on a couple of the cards, I'm using an old paper pad from Reverse Confetti. This is a company that closed several years ago, but I still have a few of the paper pads. I was trying to decide what to use and I thought this one would be perfect for some sports cards. So let's go ahead and get started with card number one. I selected two pattern papers. For the background, it's orange and black, sort of a chevron design. And I'll be layering that on some black cardstock. And toward the bottom of the card, I'm adding a two inch panel of this fun design, sort of looks like leaves in orange, black, and it has a white background. I'll first layer that piece on some black cardstock. Then I'll put adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. For a little bit of shine, I'm adding a Love From Lizzie peel off on the top and bottom of the smaller pattern paper piece. This is the copper mirror color in the pinstripe style. I'm using the medium width. I did cut the peel offs just a little bit wider than this panel. I'll wrap the ends around the back. Next, I'll put Barely Art glue on the back, then adhere this piece about half an inch up from the bottom of the card trying to make sure to get it nice and straight. Now I'll set that aside and start assembling a gnome. I recently purchased a new craft mat and I'm trying my best not to get glue all over it. I tend to be very messy when I'm using liquid adhesive. So I cut down a small piece of one of scrapbook.com silicone mats. That way it doesn't take up a lot of space on my desk. My first gnome will be a basketball player. I'm using the new body that has the jersey, shorts, and legs, and I decided to have this gnome wearing the baseball hat. The orange polka dot paper is from the same reverse confetti paper pad. 
Then I used some soft orange and a brighter orange cardstock color for the rest of the hat. For the shorts, I'm using the same soft orange color. And for the trim, I'm using black cardstock. I'll first attach the shorts. Then I'll adhere the legs with the feet. I use white cardstock for the background piece of the body, but all of that will be covered up, so you could use whatever color you want. I like that there's the option to have bare feet, or you could add some shoes. I figured it was probably safer for this gnome to be wearing shoes rather than play basketball barefoot. The skin tone cardstock I'm using for the gnomes is by P13, and if you weren't aware, Jaded Blossom does stock the paper pad. It includes a variety of different skin tone cardstock colors, and it's perfect for the gnomes. The shoes the gnome will be wearing are gray, and I'm using the same gray cardstock color for the gnome's jersey. For the shoelaces and the sole of the shoes, I'm using more black cardstock. I'll also use black cardstock for the trim on the jersey. On the very front of the jersey, there's a triangle piece. I did cut it out from the same soft orange cardstock color, and I will adhere it on the jersey, but it does end up getting covered up with the beard and also the basketball. But if you're making this a girl gnome, you'll still be able to see that triangle detail since it won't be covered up with a beard. This gnome will have a brown beard and mustache. I'll first attach the mustache. The bottom curve of the hat lines up perfectly with the top curve of the beard. You never actually see the boy gnome's face or even their head since they're always wearing a hat and they have a very full beard. Before I assemble all of the gnome, I'll add the black stripes on the basketball. I almost forgot to add the shoelaces on the shoes. There are some fairly small pieces in this set, so it does help to have a pair of reverse tweezers. To make sure I didn't lose all those small die cut pieces, I kept everything organized in one of scrapbook.com's stack and sort trays. I actually had four of them all stacked up when I prepped this video. One tray for each card. Since the background of my card is fairly busy, I'll be adding my gnome on a vellum octagon. And the octagon die is from Jaded Blossom. This will be the tallest gnome I've ever made. I laid all of the pieces of the gnome on my card so I could figure out how tall this gnome will actually be. I'll first attach the beard on the jersey. Then I can adhere the hat. Since there isn't really an area to attach the two pieces together, I'll put a piece of double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the beard then I can attach the hat on top. Next, I'll add the gnome's nose, and I am popping it up with some foam dimension. So there is my gnome almost all assembled. The gnome will be holding the basketball. Even though this gnome does have legs, the gnomes still don't have any arms. You only see their hands. I'll put a little bit of glue on the back side of the hands and attach them to the basketball so it'll look like the gnome is holding it. Now I'll flip over the basketball, put foam dimension on the back, and I'm using some thin foam squares. Then I'll remove the release paper and adhere the basketball in front of the gnome's beard area. Now I'll flip over the gnome, remove the backing on the double-sided adhesive tape, and I will be popping up the gnome using more foam dimension. This is a foam roll from scrapbook.com. It's their one millimeter thickness. It'll add that little bit of dimension without making the card super thick. Although there is a little extra dimension since I did pop up the basketball with more one millimeter foam. I'll make sure to get good coverage, remove the release paper, then I'll hold my octagon on the card, try to figure out placement of the gnome, I want to make sure to leave enough space at the bottom of the card for the sentiment. I've already stamped and cut out the sentiment, hope your birthday is a slam dunk. Using the outline die, I cut out a second piece from some black cardstock. I'll adhere the two pieces together, creating a black drop shadow underneath the sentiment. And that'll help it pop against the background. I will add foam dimension on the back of the sentiment. I'll remove the release paper and adhere the sentiment down first. 
Still trying to make sure I leave enough space for the gnome since this is a very tall gnome. I'll adhere the gnome on the vellum octagon. Then I'll flip over the octagon and put glue on the back side just behind the gnome. That way the glue doesn't show through on the vellum. Then I'll attach the gnome on the front of the card and I have his feet sitting right on top of the sentiment. For embellishments, I'm adding some black enamel stars, and these are just from my stash. I'll put three in the upper right-hand corner and two in the lower left-hand corner next to the gnome. For a final finishing touch, I'll use a white gel pen and add highlights on the gnome's hat, nose, basketball, shorts, and also his shoes. So there is my finished card, and I really like how this one turned out. If you have some sport fans in your life, you will have so much fun using this release, making cards for them. Now moving on to card number two. Now I will admit I am not a sports person. I have nothing against sports. It's just something I've never been interested in. The most I've ever watched of sports is when my kids were playing. I also don't know the name of sports teams or their colors, except for one, and that's because I live in Western Washington and the Seattle Seahawks are very popular. So yes, I do know that their colors are blue and green. And since I do have Seahawk friends, I thought it would be fun to make a little Seahawk card featuring a football player and also a cheerleader. I'm sure the actual Seahawk uniforms don't look anything like this, but I was going more for the colors and I think any Seahawk fan would still appreciate this card. The football helmet for the gnome is so cute. I'm giving the gnome black shoes, and I did pop up the shoes and also the nose using foam dimension. The boy gnome will be holding a football. There's a background piece and I use dark brown cardstock for it. I also use the same dark brown cardstock for the football, white cardstock for the trim and also the stitching on the football. And if you use that background piece, it does have the hand positions. And that piece really is optional. You can always add the hands wherever you want if you just use the single football. After gluing the hands down and holding the football in front of the gnome, I realized I had the wrong hands. The left was where the right was supposed to be and vice versa. Luckily, the glue hadn't dried completely, so I was able to peel those up and reattach them. Now I'll put thin foam dimension on the back, remove the release paper, and adhere the football in front of the boy gnome. Now I'll start assembling the cheerleader, and I've already put some of her together. There's a cheerleading dress on the sport add-on set number one. I use some gray tone-on-tone -tone polka dot paper from Doodlebug for the main portion of her dress, although most of it will be covered up. Then I have some white shimmer cardstock for the skirt and also that V stripe on the front of the dress. And green cardstock for that second layer of her skirt. I use the same green cardstock for her hat. And this little cheerleader has red curly hair. She'll be holding a pom-pom, use the same green and blue colors. I'm sure it's safer if she wore a pair of shoes, but I decided to give the cheerleader bare feet. Since she's holding the pom-pom, you'll only see one of her hands. I'll put glue on the back and attach the one visible hand. So there's the cheerleader and the football player all assembled. For the background of my card, I use pattern paper from Doodlebug Designs Petite Prints. I've already put foam dimension on the back of both of the gnomes. I'm using the large round foam from scrapbook.com. I'll remove the release paper, put the cheerleader on the left side of the card and the football player on the right side. And I am putting the football player just a little bit higher. I've already stamped and cut out the sentiment game time. Using the outline die, I cut out a second piece from black cardstock to create the drop shadow. And I did pop up the sentiment using some foam dimension. I'll use a white gel pen, add highlights on both of the gnomes. Then for a final finishing touch, I'll add a few of the black enamel stars. 
put three in the upper left hand corner and two on the right side of the football gnome. So there is my finished card and this is card number two. Now I need to figure out which Seahawk fan to send this card to. For card number three, using more pattern paper from the Reverse Confetti Collection, I have this fun design, either flowers or leaves in pretty teal pink with the black background. For a little bit of sparkle, I'm adding some Love From Lizzie peel-offs. This is the pink holographic color in the pinstripe style. I'll add one of each width on the back of the card. Part of the background will be covered up with the image, so I didn't need to use a full piece going all the way across the card. I'll wrap the ends around the back, layer this piece on some black cardstock, put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. Now I'll set that aside and start assembling another gnome. Most of my family feels the same way about sports, really not interested, but I do have a niece that plays hockey, so I'm making this card for her. I know I'm not following the colors of her team, but I know she wears pink gloves and also wraps her hockey stick with pink tape. I'm using the new body with the legs. She'll be wearing black shorts and a light pink jersey. I did cut off the legs from that background piece. And using the ice skating add-on set, I've already assembled the legs with pink skates. You could have your gnome doing the splits wearing skates, but instead I cut that piece in half and I'll adhere the two legs behind the body. I'm trying to adjust the legs so they're even. For her hockey helmet, I use pink cardstock for the background piece and teal cardstock for the front. You'll only see the pink through the holes of the front piece of the helmet. I'll attach the gnome's head on the top of the jersey, then I'll adhere the helmet. My niece has red hair, so this gnome will have red braids with pink bows. Before attaching the braids, I'm putting some double-sided adhesive tape on the back side. Just want to make sure all those pieces stay together. Next, I'll attach the nose, and I am popping it up with some foam dimension. And I like to add the nose before the hair. That way it can get all the pieces evenly spaced. I'll put glue on the back and adhere both of the braids in place, making sure the straps of the helmet are in front. I believe her jersey number is 20. I know it's generally on the back of the shirt, but since you won't see the back, I'm putting the number 20 on the front. And I used the Build-A-Booth alphabet add-on set for the numbers. It includes the full alphabet, numbers, and some punctuation. She'll be holding a hockey stick. I cut out the stick from some gray cardstock. Use teal cardstock for that top area. Not sure if that's tape. And for the two small stripes at the bottom of this stick, I'm using some pink cardstock. I don't want the hockey player to get cold hands, so I did cut out some pink gloves. And the gloves are from the Gnome Dyes Christmas add-on set number one. They're technically Santa's gloves. I cut them out from the same pink cardstock color and I decided she would have this stick sort of facing up. I want to be able to add both of the gloves on the stick without covering up all of her jersey number. I'll attach the gloves using some glue, then I'll flip over the hockey stick and pop it up using some foam dimension. And I will need to cut some narrow pieces of foam to fit behind the stick. I'm using the thin foam dimension behind her gloves and also the top portion of the stick. And for the very bottom portion of the stick, I am using some slightly thicker foam dimension. This is the small rounds from scrapbook.com. It's their two millimeter thickness. I also cut out the hockey puck, but I end up not using it. So there's my hockey player gnome all assembled. I think she looks so cute. I've already gone ahead and stamped and cut out the sentiment, Hockey Birthday. I added a drop shadow of black cardstock. Since the background of the card is fairly busy, I'll be adding my gnome on a white oval die cut. And I did use some white shimmer cardstock for the oval. I'll put glue on the back and adhere the oval on the right side of the card. 
I've already gone ahead and put foam dimension on the back of the gnome. I'll remove the release paper and attach the gnome on the white oval. I also have foam dimension behind the sentiment and I'll adhere it in the upper left hand corner. I was trying to figure out where I could place the hockey puck but it didn't look right so I ended up not using it at all. For embellishments I'm using some of the enamel white stars. I'll put three on the left side underneath the sentiment and two in the lower right hand corner. Then for a final finishing touch, I'll use a white gel pen, add highlights on her helmet, her nose, the gloves, the hockey stick, and also her pink skates. So there is my finished card, and I love how this one turned out. This is my favorite card from the whole set. But do let me know which card is your favorite. I can't wait to send this to my niece for her birthday. Hopefully she'll like it. For card number four, I'll be using the freebie stencil set. I have some pattern paper from Doodlebug Design. It's a light gray and it has a grid tone on tone design. For the first stencil layer, I'm using Catherine Pooler's hoodie ink color. And I'm trying to do a very light coat of ink. I don't want it to be too strong in the background. Most of the stencil background will be covered up, but you'll still be able to see the fun design. Once I finish with the first stencil layer, I'll remove it, bring in the second stencil layer, and I'm securing the stencil in place using scrapbook.com's mint tape. The ink color for the second stencil layer is Catherine Pooler's Something Borrowed. I have my paper and stencil set up in Waffle Flowers mini stencil mat. Now I'll remove this stencil and you can see the fun design. I'll cut down this panel to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, and I've already gone ahead and adhered it on a card base. This card will be featuring one of Jaded Blossom's booths. I've already assembled this, and you can always watch one of my other Jaded Blossom videos to see how to assemble the booth. I did pop it up with some foam dimension, remove the release paper, and I'll adhere the booth at the bottom of the card. Now I'll fill the booth with a variety of sports equipment. I've already assembled the pieces. I have a volleyball, tennis balls, baseball, a football, basketball, soccer ball. There's a tennis racket, a baseball bat, a hockey stick. I have the little fan flag and also the red foam hand with number one. I'll put some of the balls inside the booth. Some will go in front of the booth on the left side. Most of the die cut images I'm gluing down, but when they're on top of several other layers, I will put some foam dimension behind them. I'll put the tennis racket, baseball bat, and hockey stick in front of the booth on the right side. I will pop up the hockey stick, but I'm only putting foam dimension behind the areas where it's not sitting on the tennis racket and baseball bat. I still have the hockey puck from the previous card, so I decided to add it with all the other sports equipment. I'll put glue on the back and put it inside the booth right in front of the volleyball. Next I'll add the blue flag and I did attach a small yellow star. For a sentiment, I've already stamped and cut out all star. I'll put glue on the back and adhere it at the top of the booth. To create the look of nails, I'm using a silver gel pen and carefully filling in the holes of the boards of the booth. In previous videos where I've used the booth, I've used Love From Lizzie peel-offs for the nails on the booth. It's a bubble style and it's a tiny little circle that fits perfectly inside that small hole, but unfortunately it is a discontinued style so you aren't able to purchase it. So I decided to try a different option and I think the silver gel pen works very well. So there is my finished card. This is card number four. I have two more projects to share with you. If you weren't aware, Jaded Blossom has some MDF gnomes. So these are little wooden gnomes and they're the exact same size as the die cut gnomes. There are two different options. One of them has a hang tag ring at the top and the other has a little stand. Last month they released the bunny with both of the options. Currently the boy and girl gnomes are only available with the hang tag ring, 
but coming very soon, they will have the stand option. So I'm showing you a little sneak peek here. I used some products from the new release to make two little stand-up gnomes. The boy gnome is holding a number one trophy, and the girl gnome is holding a pickleball paddle. Now here's another look at the six projects I made using Jaded Blossom's brand new March 2024 release. It's all about sports. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links in the description box below. I know there are a lot of sports fans out there, so if you love this release and want to save some money, you can always purchase the full release bundle. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.